Welcome to Nursing with Professor B. My name is Bridget. In today's video, I'll be covering the basics, how to calculate IV drip rates when the question is asking you find the drops per minute. I will show you how to obtain the answer to these problems step by step so that after this, you will definitely be able to solve these problems. Welcome to basics of IV drip calculation, dimensional analysis, part one. If you do not know how to set up dimensional analysis, please do not watch this video. You will be overwhelmed. Please review my other video first. If you don't know how to set up DA, I made a video on DA 101 or dimensional analysis 101. I went over my easy breezy ABC formula. So again, please watch that first. I don't want you to uh, get ahead of yourself and then get overwhelmed. These are just types of IV fluids. If you're doing a dimensional analysis problem on paper, you don't have to worry so much about this, but please, when you are actually a nurse or even when you're in clinical as a nursing student, please pay very close attention to what the order says and make sure that you are picking the correct IV bag and that you're not, for example, giving someone dextrose when they were supposed to get lactated ringers or that you're giving the correct percentage of dextrose. So that's all I will cover there. When you see NS or normal saline, it's going to be 0.9%. Okay, that's considered normal saline. And if you are like me and you question everything, I appreciate you. And the reason why it's called normal saline, if you're wondering like, why is it called normal saline? So the reason why it's called normal saline is that the origin of normal saline has been traced to an 1883 study by a Dutch scientist named Hamburger. His work suggested mistakenly that the concentration of salt in human blood was 0.9%. He argued that a solution of equal concentration would be a normal composition for intravenous fluids, hence the name. So it's called zero, it's called normal saline because they that the thought is that that was the concentration of salts in our body. Half normal saline, well, why is it called half normal saline? Because if you divide 0 0.9 divided by two, you get 0.45. So that's why half normal saline is 0.45%. Uh, I was reading an article on there on NPR and it was talking about how studies have actually shown that lactated ringers is superior to normal saline, but that's a topic for another day. All right, so IV drip factors. What you need to memorize, there's a few things that you will need to memorize in regards to math for nursing, but you do need to remember that a micro drip is going to always be 60 drops per milliliter. It's a value that you need to remember in case that you need to use it for a math problem. So micro drip is 60 drops per milliliter. Always and only thank you. Macro drip you wanna check the package. So if the problem has a macro drip, they're going, if this is a checkoff, you're going to check the package, right? For the macro drip. Or if they give you some kind of like tubing label. However, if it's a math problem, they will state it in the problem. They're going to tell you, oh, it's 10 drops per milliliter, 15 drops per milliliter, or 20 drops per milliliter. To calculate the IV drip rates, you must know this information. So you must know the drip factor rate, okay? Is it 10, 15, 20, or 60? Now let's get to our practice questions. How many hours will a thousand, the first two are duration, and then we get to drops per minute. How many hours will a thousand milliliters of normal saline run at 125 mLs per hour? You, with dimensional analysis, you always want to ask yourself, what are we looking for? And you're looking for hours. And going back to my ABC method, we are looking for hours. How many hours will a thousand mLs of normal saline run at if it's going at 125 mLs per hour? So whatever you're looking for in dimensional analysis, the unit, you're going to put here. So in here, we're looking for hours. So you're going to put hours here. And then whatever is here, whatever you are looking for, you put at the top. We go to our math problem and we look at what in our math problem has one hour and what is it married to? Whenever they give you a fraction, do not separate those numbers. Think of a newlywed couple, they just got married, they're nauseatingly in love with each other and you cannot separate them. Like they're the ones 
you don't separate that fraction. So if I have, if I'm looking for hours, I'm going to put one hour up here, then that's married to 125. So I'm going to put 125 here. And then because in dimensional analysis, we have to cross out units of measurement so that we can get what we're looking for and we're looking for hours. So I have milliliters here at the bottom. How do I cross out milliliters? By putting milliliters up top, right? You cancel out units that are directly across from each other. So one hour over 125 times we have a thousand milliliters and that's basically it. You multiply across, this is a thousand, this is 125. 1,000 divided by 125 is eight hours. So it's going to take eight hours to run. Now you don't have to use dimensional analysis, but I love dimensional analysis because you really just can't mess it up. You could have just done 1,000 divided by 125 without even bothering with the dimensional analysis. But what I've noticed in the past with students, they rush and they don't set things up using DA, sometimes they will make mistakes and errors in calculation. The other recommendation that I have for you is to check your math at least twice, right? At least make sure you divide a thousand by 125, a thousand by 125. And then if you get the same answer, you know, you did it right. Sometimes occasionally you don't zero out your calculator correctly, and then you get some weird numbers. So just always double check your math. Practice question two. Calculate the number of hours the IV infusion will last for a 1,000 ml IV bag at 75 ml per hour. So again, I won't go into much detail. What are we looking for? Hours. We have the married fraction here. One hour is going at 75 times we have a 1,000 ml bag. 1,000 divided by 75 is 13 hours. Now we get to practice question three. I did want to take, so real quick, I did want to take some time. If you are struggling with nursing tests and how to take nursing tests and you're struggling with how to answer NCLEX style questions, I, I do have a course that I created called Nursing Test Secrets, NCLEX Test Taking Strategies. This is not an NCLEX review course. It's how to take nursing tests. It's a very affordable course and, and it's everything in the course that I wish and I put everything in the course in regards to how to take nursing tests that I wish someone had told me when I was in nursing school. So again, if you're struggling and you're just not understanding how to take nursing tests, make sure that you check out my course because I really think it can help improve your nursing test scores. It can also help as a refresher for before you take the NCLEX and just NCLEX test taking strategies because it, have you ever known people that are very intelligent, but they're awful test takers? So even for the NCLEX, it's important that you are a good test taker. So whether you're going to take your NCLEX, I recommend that this will help you brush up on your test taking skills. Or if you're in the thick of nursing school, then I also recommend this course. Drop a comment below and let me know what semester of nursing school you're in. Now we are at practice question three, calculate drops per minute. Order is 500 milliliters of D5W to infuse at 100 ml per hour. The drop factor of the tubing is 20 drops per milliliter. So ask yourself, what are we looking for? Drops per minute. What do we have? We have 500 ml and it's infusing at 100 ml per hour and we have the drop factor. We can definitely solve this. So how would you set up your problem? If you said that we start with drops per minute here on the left, you are correct. Looking for drops per minute. And what I actually recommend that you do is that you set your problem up first with the unit of measurements. So you know if you have drops here, this is going to be drops. And then you're going to look and see what drops is married to. And 20 drops is married to one ml. We have milliliters here, we need to cross out milliliters. So you have here two milliliters, two unit of measurements that both have milliliters. Which one would you use? The correct one to use is 100 milliliters because that's married here to one hour, right? And one hour, we need to cross out hours now. How do we get from hours to minutes? Well, one hour has 60 minutes. So now we cancel out hours and then we divide 2000 by 60 or 200 by six and we get 33.3333333. But you always are going to round to the nearest whole number when you are doing drops. The tubing doesn't do half a drop. 
So the correct answer is 33 drops per minute. And practice question four. We have a 15 drop per milliliter set is used to infuse an IV at a rate of 90 mLs per hour, fine drops per minute. Another trick, if you don't know what you're supposed to look for, what unit of measurement, or when you're taking a dosage calc test in nursing school, is to look at the answer area. And a lot of times they'll include like a line and then the unit of measurement. Like they'll say like line mLs or line drops per minute. That way, even if you're completely lost, sometimes that can help you get your gather your thoughts and say, okay, they're looking at, they need drops per minute. So what information do we have? We have a drop factor of 15 drops per milliliter, and we are infusing at a rate of 90 mLs per hour. So always set up your problem. Drops over minute. If drops is up top, we're going to put drops up top. 15 drops is married to what? 15 drops is married to one milliliter. We need to cross out milliliters. So what are we going to put at the top? Milliliters. Okay, 90 milliliters is married to one hour. So 90 milliliters over one hour. One hour, we need to cross out. We need to cross out hours. So one hour has 60 minutes in it. And now we have the correct units of measurements. So 1,350 or 135 divided by six is 22.5. This is five and above, you round up. So it, you round to 23 drops per minute. Practice question number five. Calculate the drop per minute flow rate for an IV infusion at 100 ml per hour using a set calibrated to 20 drops per milliliter. So what are we looking for? Drops per minute. It says right here, calculate the drops per minute. We have a drop factor of 20 drops per milliliter, infusing at 100 mLs per hour. So we're gonna put drops per minute here. What's drops married to? Milliliters. 20 drops over milliliters times 100 milliliters because we're crossing out these unit of measurements. What's 100 mLs married to? One hour and one hour over 60 minutes, and you divide 2,000 by 60 or 200 divided by six, you get 33.33333. You round, you don't round up, you, it stays the same because it's not greater than five, so you have 33 drops per minute. For people that are, for people that math is challenging to them, dimensional analysis, it's a foolproof way. It doesn't require a lot of thinking, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but it's it's an automated system. You know, Henry Ford had the assembly line. I feel like dimensional analysis is, a, is a, an assembly line. You plug and play. If you want a copy of this PowerPoint, you can email Bridget at nursingwithprofessorb.com. I will send you a link so that you can access this online. Just email me at bridget at nursingwithprofessorb.com as a bonus for staying until the end. If you found value in these videos, please like, subscribe, and turn on that notification. It takes me a long time to make these videos. Like, you know, I'm, I'm dedicating a lot of hours. It takes time to create the videos, edit the videos, upload the videos. You get the point, right? So all I ask in return is that you please Subscribe, it helps me It helps me grow. It helps other students find me. Thanks for helping out. Make sure you tune in next week. Next week, I will be doing more IV drip calculations if you want to see more problems.